South Africa has passed another grim milestone, recording its highest daily number of COVID-19 infections. 26,485 more people have tested positive in the last 24-hour reporting cycle. Sadly, 175 more people have succumbed to the virus as the third wave continues to intensify. Gauteng accounts for 16,091 of the latest cases. 557 people were admitted to hospital as the country's healthcare system battles to cope with the pressure. So it's been a week into level four lockdown, but did the new regulations that came into effect on Monday, or have the new regulations which came into effect on Monday, have they started to show any kind of benefit for the country? Let's speak to Ridwan Suleiman from the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Ridwan, always good to speak to you. So I'm looking at the latest numbers, 26,485 new infections announced on Saturday night. Why are the numbers still so stubbornly high? Good afternoon, Tendekila. Um, we indeed we continue to see record high levels of new cases being reported, um, and it continues to be driven by Gauteng. But unfortunately, what we're also seeing now is a rise across all of the other provinces. Um, so while Gauteng still contributes to 60% of the total cases reported nationally, we're seeing a bigger contribution and a rise in infections across many of the other provinces, notably in in the big uh, provinces of Western Cape and KwaZulu Natal now too. And Ridwan, just on that, whenever we have the announcement of a lockdown, people often want to see or measure very quickly the effect of new measures. Is it too soon to tell if level four is working? Yes, it, it is indeed too soon to see the effects of level four restrictions that came into effect on Monday, the 28th of June. Uh, we're just a week into level four, and due to the incubation period of the virus, as well as the time for people to start showing symptoms, to go for testing and the reporting thereof, we're likely only uh, uh, going to see the effects of level four restrictions in the coming weeks, uh, in the coming week, um, so about 10 to 14 days after that came into effect. What we're actually looking at now is whether the, the previous two um, rise in, in re restrictions or interventions have had any effect on the epidemiological trajectory. Um, and unfortunately, the level two restrictions that we moved into in the beginning of June had no effect on, on the trajectory, uh, not in Gauteng or even across the other provinces. Um, level three did show some decline in the movement patterns, uh, however, um, still very little effect on the on the epidemiological numbers, certainly not quite the same effect that we had when we moved into level three restrictions during the surge in the second wave at the end of December. Um, so, so unfortunately not seeing that have much of an effect, possibly due to it being a bit too late with infections having been seeded across Gauteng and across all of the other provinces. Hopefully though we'll, we'll possibly see some effect of level four in the coming week. And when he spoke at the announcement of level four lockdown restrictions, President Sol Ramaphosa said there'd be a review at the end of the 14 days, the two weeks. Will two weeks be enough to bring these numbers down given that we are seeing the worst surge that we've had since the start of the pandemic? In all honesty and from looking at what the, the numbers are indicating right now, um, it's highly unlikely that we'll see a change um, after the two weeks as indicated. Um, if we look at number of cases being reported nationally, we're seeing record highs. The seven-day average is now up to almost 19,000 per day, set to surpass the peaks of the previous waves. Um, we're seeing that the number of hospital admissions continues to increase, and that will still increase even after uh, cases start to slow down. Um, and we're seeing a rise across many, many provinces beyond just, just Kauteng. So, um, uh, it, uh, looking at it right now, it's, it's unlikely that we'll see um, that, that the restrictions are eased um, uh, in a week's time. I was looking at some numbers around the recovery rate. In May, the recovery rate was in the mid-early 90s, 93% 90 or so. We're sitting now at around 87%. How worried should we be about that? Look, I think the, the recoveries do have some limitations. Uh, recoveries are basically the total number of cases reported, uh, less the, um, the um, number of deaths. 
um, and less the, the number of, of um, um, or recoveries or active cases. Um, I think because we're seeing a surge in the number of cases being reported right now, uh, there is always a, a delay to, until people um, recover. There's also a difference in reporting of recoveries between the different provinces. Um, sometimes some provinces, in fact, report recoveries sooner than other provinces. So I think we, we probably shouldn't focus too much on recoveries, although it's, it's, a, it's a, a positive indicator. Um, I think um, that, that number, because we're seeing a surge in cases, uh, that number will, will lag, uh, lag behind and drop for now. I suppose the other issue with the recoveries as far as accuracy is that there was advice sometime last year that, look, if you do stay home for the period of 10 to 14 days and you feel that you're well enough to go back to your regular life, work and the like, you don't have to retest. So that also would affect the data capturing aspect for recoveries. Am I right? That's indeed correct. We, we don't test for recoveries. Um, it, it's more calculated uh, based on when someone is no longer infectious. Um, so that infectious period about 10 days after um, either having showing symptoms or returning a positive result um, or after being discharged from hospitals. Um, and the reporting or calculating thereof does vary from province to province. Fridon Suleiman, good to speak to you. Thank you.